Comic books are no stranger to embarrassing, overly obvious advertising. They've been ingrained in the DNA of printed picture stories for decades because, hey, someone's gotta pay for the printing and artist costs. There was an entire historical period through the 70s and 80s known as the Diabetic Weakness Universe, because comic books used to routinely feature stories of villains being defeated by the wonders of the addictive properties of cheap snack cakes. I made up the name of that historical period for the joke, but the actual advertisement-based superpower writing is totally real. Cheetah, the Penguin, and even the most popular, most beloved supervillain of all time, Jun Jitsui, are certainly mighty foes. But do they have what it takes to stand up to the cakey deliciousness of a hostess Twinkie? No. Of course they fucking don't. Because behind the scenes, the gods of their universe, the comic book writers, have a kryptonite-style weakness to the power of money. There's plenty of great topics to cover in the realm of comic book sellouts. Marvel's crossover with Office Max and real-life school teachers, which is actually not as terrible as you'd think it is. DC's crossover with Jared from Subway, which is just as terrible as you'd think it is. And the entire arc where people are able to identify the Joker through various disguises because the Joker hates host is fruit pies, and you'd have to be crazy to do that. But to introduce you to this deep, complex, and infinitely embarrassing world, I figured I'd start you out with something recent. Batman meets the FaZe Clan. Ugh. Okay, alright, so... For those of you out there who are currently watching this video who also have a job that's successful enough to earn you some amount of excess investable income, you probably need to be told who the FaZe Clan is. Well, in simple terms, they're an esports team, and I know nothing else beyond that. I watch esports every now and then, but not closely enough to follow specific teams or players, and I have, in truth, never heard of anyone featured in this comic book as far as I know. I hopped on the FaZe Clan website, and according to their own self-written testimony, they're the most popular esports team on the planet. Seeing as I have seen the FaZe Clan gamer tag stolen by countless numbers of 12-year-olds in Call of Duty lobbies across the globe, I'm inclined to believe them. Having said all that, I need to make this next point crystal clear because who boy does the internet love drama. I am in no way shitting on anyone featured in this comic personally, nor commenting on any of their online content featured anywhere by any of the FaZe Clan. Any criticism or commentary I make here is solely about the comic I'm talking about, and it's just me being a silly little goofball. I just find it amusing that gaming has gotten so oversaturated by this point that in 2022, a professional esports team can be featured in a comic with THE Batman. Besides, I did a little bit of snooping on their website, and the majority of their signed content creators have more subscribers than I do. So legally, that entitles me to say absolutely anything I want about them. Because if they try to crack back at me, they'll be punching down. And that's bullying. And I have not been seeing a therapist for 10 years just to have them undo all of that work. I will sue the shit out of them. I am strong. I have value. I am a human being. I have self-respect! This cover is brilliant, and to me sets the stage for the entire thing. Because it leaves me and every other reader with just one question. What the fuck does any of this have to do with video games? We open with Batman, Oracle, and Robin all fucking around on a new virtual reality headset. This thing is called the Nigma Box, which already gets me excited because that means this issue is going to feature the Riddler. And you don't make a 30 minute video sucking the Riddler's dick without being a fan of his work, you know what I mean? Apparently the Nigma Box is the latest gaming console to hit the market, yet customers are so fervent for getting one that they're reselling for thousands of dollars. Jesus Christ, how pathetically desperate are gamers, huh? But what's this? The Riddler's new game console is actually a mind control device, manipulating the brainwaves of anyone who plays it and turning them into malicious criminals. Um, Oracle, you might want to take that thing off. The mind control signal can't be disrupted from the outside, so Oracle suggests they send a team into the virtual world to destroy the signal from the inside out. Or, better, much more sensical idea, tell the world what's happening. Isn't this late enough in Batman's career that everyone knows he saved the world like a hundred times? Just hold a press conference and tell everyone to destroy the Enigma boxes. Track down some sales logs and start confiscating them. Hell, track down the Riddler himself, kick his ass, and disable the brainwaves. 
He always leaves ways to track himself down. Oh, wait, no, wait, don't, don't do any of that because we wouldn't have a way to shoehorn in the fucking FaZe Clan. The source is impossible to disrupt, at least from the outside. If we want to stop what's happening, someone needs to go inside this digital world. Ooh, I know exactly who to ask. We discussed this. They're too immature. Batman, I know you're the world's greatest detective, but for this, we'll need the world's greatest gamers. My guys, Batman is here. That is not how I would react to Batman showing up to my house. My thoughts would be, oh my God, you're real. You're a real fucking person. Aren't you supposed to be a fictional character? I, I, you aren't supposed to exist, but now that you do, Two things are gonna happen. Number one, give me one billion dollars or I'm gonna tell absolutely everyone that you're Bruce Wayne. And number two, make me your new Robin or I'm gonna sell you out to the fucking FaZe Clan. So the FaZe Clan has already figured out that the headset is some wacky shit because some of their team is currently trapped inside a few of them. We get the groan inducing, I've heard of marathon streams, but this is getting ridiculous, which is the exact kind of line that you would expect a washed up AD sitcom writer to force into this. A Batman's too old to play video games. A dinosaur, if you will. Fuck you, Batman, you peak physical performance piece of piss. Let a group of late 20-year-old gamers decide the lives of the entirety of Gotham City. You can just hang out in our gamer house and be careful not to get dust on anything every time you cough. The Enigma Box is the creation of one of my greatest foes, the Riddler. He's using it to wreak havoc all over the world. One by one, he's amassing an army loyal only to him. Yes. Fuck yes. Look at this peak Riddler aesthetic. Look at this perfect specimen of brains and bronze. The next time I go to the gym, I'm gonna be powering out Nigma male grind sets. Batman asks the motherfucking FaZe Clan if they'll help take down the Riddler. Rug shows up with some pizza and Batman gets pissed off because he hates pizza, I guess. I don't know, but Eddie, it's time to head to the Batcave. Oracle has programmed some VR headsets to block out the brain control waves and inform FaZe Clan they won't be going in alone. Joining them will be the other saviors of Gotham City. Robin, Nightwing, Batwing, okay, and Batwoman? Oh, boo, boo, boo! And to mark the occasion, Oracle has made sure to plaster the neutralized Enigma boxes with the FaZe Clan and Batman logos. If slapping his logo on everything wasn't something Batman routinely did, I'd swear that this may have been an attempt at shoving the promotional material down our throats. Mm, the world may never know. Riddler will know we entered his domain, and he won't be happy about it. Be ready for anything. Are we inside the Enigma box? It would appear Riddler has cleared the board for your arrival. He's turned decrypting his signal into a game. Number one. World famous professional video game players FaZe Clan don't understand that when you wear virtual reality headsets, you become immersed in the video game. Number two, didn't you already know that this would be a game, Batman? Wasn't that, I don't know, the entire point of hiring a team of pro gamers? Whatever. FaZe Clan has to access Riddler's control towers, which are protected by four digital guardians which are, obligatorily, modeled after famous Batman villains. I found Scarecrow's design here to be sexy. I don't know why, I just did. Feel free to judge me, but I'd fuck it. Moving on. Oracle uses literal hacks to power up the FaZe Clan in preparation for their battle. Healer. Tank. Archer. Mage. Holy shit, I am so bored. You managed to come up with the most generic and uninspired classes and class names I have ever seen. Phase up! Not bad, Oracle. I thought you might like that. Yeah, Batman loves awkwardly shoehorned in catchphrases. Actually, it, depending on the interpretation of Batman, he literally does. Never mind. Holy ravioli! And now we get some introductory shots to our intimidating, overly recycled digital guardians. Two-Face, who has a stash of time bombs and a gun. Mr. Freeze, whose powers over cryonics seem to be amplified to science fiction proportions. Scarecrow, who I'd still have sex with. And the Joker, who owns a whole bunch of mirrors. And a gun! They're just a bunch of gamers, Batman. I worry they're in over their heads. You may be right, but they're the best option we've got. Besides, I called backup. You know, Oracle. At any point during this entire thing, I could be doing absolutely anything to catch Riddler in real life. 
piecing together clues, doing actual detective work, saving lives from the criminal rampages currently happening in the city. But no, I'd rather just sit here, watch what happens, and wait for the two main characters of Double Dragon to show up. The healer and Robin face off against Two-Face. Two-Face has two bombs, but one of them is fake. In terms of staying true to Two-Face's character, this is spot on, but in terms of being a good plan, this is completely stupid. They have to choose which bomb is fake. But Robin says there's no time and just grabs a bomb and detonates it, which blows the shit out of Two-Face and also would have annihilated Robin if the healer wasn't there to protect him. And then it turns out that the real bomb was the correct choice because it contained the token they need to prove they defeated the boss. Okay, all jokes aside, all, jo no, all jokes aside, I'm serious. You guys agree with me that the writing in this is absolute ass, right? Why did Robin just randomly grab a bomb and detonate it? Does Digital Two-Face have any sort of plan at all here, except to either get exploded by his own bomb or have nothing at all happen? Why do the healer and Robin even bother with the bombs at all and not just blast Two-Face with some of that new cheat code magic that Oracle gave them? This entire page is extremely dumb and everyone in it is even dumber. Batwoman and the tank are fighting Mr. Freeze. <laughs> 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 okay 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 so yeah they beat mr freeze by throwing a giant hammer at him <laughs> fuck me the archer and batwing are fighting stupid sexy scarecrow and batwing mentions how he can feel the fear taking over and he can't think of anything else so he tells the archer to take down scarecrow by himself which he does with a totally blind trick shot number one it seems the members of FaZe Clan are immune to the fear toxin. I, I mean, I guess in like a promotional sense of, oh, FaZe Clan doesn't fear anything. That's cute. But realistically, it makes no sense. Number two, how did Batwing explain that he was being consumed by the fear toxin if he, and I quote, can't think of anything else? Number three, the archer says he can't do this alone, and then he immediately, effortlessly, with his eyes closed, does this all alone in the span of half a page, which, I mean... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm still laughing about Mr. Freeze. <laughs> it looks like he has to take a shit, but he's busy and can't right now. <laughs> Nightwing and the Mage are fighting Joker in the Hall of Mirrors, and in comes Adapt from the FaZe Clan, who says, What's up, clowns? Temper, my back's starting to hurt from always having to carry you. Joker's made copies of himself. I'm sending you a heartbeat scanner to find the real one. No offense, Mr. Adapt, if that is your real name, but seeing someone's copy in a mirror is not a clone. It's a reflection. And I think everyone who made this comic book should take a long time to reflect on the atrocities that they've committed. A heartbeat scanner? Of course. I see you camping in the corner, Joker. You played yourself, get it? Because they're gamers! They say things that they'd say while gaming! Video games! Streaming! Content! Relatability to the youth! Merchandising! Riddler becomes wise to this horribly phoned-in cash tie-in and hacks himself into the system. Which makes no sense because it's his system, so technically he doesn't have to hack in, he's just logging in, but whatever. Riddle me this, gamers. What's all-powerful, positively filled with questions, and 75 feet tall? That's right! Right. It's the might of me and my 71 inch cock and the inevitable jock sweat that will be wafting towards you at any minute. I did the math, by the way. 5'9 is the height of the average adult male. Uh, the average penis is about five and a half inches long, give or take. Riddler is currently packing a 71 inch pecker that is hovering dangerously close to the FaZe Clan in this panel. And with how good the aim of the archer is down there, I would cover your dick hole right about now, Mr. Nigma. In my game, you're powerless. Powerless, huh? FaZe Clan is bigger than the four of us. Bigger than you. I guess he hasn't figured it out yet. Oh no! FaZe Clan! Phase up! And so everyone ties up Riddler like Gulliver's Travels and pulls him down, defeating him once and for all. No! No! 
No! According to my Googling, FaZe Clan has about 90 members as of this video. 90 people, especially most of which are not in peak 100% physical shape, are in no way, shape, or form going to have the strength to drag down a 70 fucking 5 foot tall man. Especially one as jacked as the Riddler is in this comic. Secondly, that's still me overestimating in favor of the FaZe Clan. Look at the panel where the rest of the clan shows up. I count 26, maybe 27 people joining in on this activity. If we add them to the four main protagonists, we get 31 people. We could have 31 fucking Tom Stoltmans, who is the current world's strongest man, pulling on a 75 foot tall man, and the 75 foot tall man's muscles wouldn't even tense up having to try to resist that force. Also, please, DC, stop fucking up the Riddler. As I explain in my video on why the Riddler is the best Batman villain, the Riddler only works as a mental opponent, not a big dumb bruiser. Being a big dumb bruiser is totally antithetical to his character. The final villain of this should have been a giant mushroomed up Bane, or like a, a fucking size enlarged Solomon Grundy, or a giant monster that they ripped off from another video game as like a joke or something FaZe Clan is familiar with and that's the point. Not big, dumb, penis wafting Riddler. Later that night after this entire stupid adventure is done, Batman tells Alfred he'll be staying in for the night now that the Riddler is dealt with. Even though I don't think he was ever arrested for any of this, they just kind of beat him up in a video game and gave up and went home. The FaZe Clan all hang out back at home and get a friend request from Dark Knight 27, which is a completely generic, non-unique gamer tag and could be absolutely anyone on the fucking planet. But the FaZe Clan all somehow automatically assume that it's THE Batman and get all excited and shit, instead of doing what each and every one of them would do in this scenario, immediately deleting the friend request without even reading it because none of them ever want to associate with their under the age of 12 audience. Let's rewrite this story to align better to the characters and not be so super duper dumb. The beginning of the plot is totally fine, especially if one of your constraints to the plot is we need to come up with a scenario where Batman has to rely on the FaZe Clan. The Enigma box hits store shelves and it's a huge hit console for all the seasons, and the people who play it end up becoming brainwashed by the Riddler to go do crimes and serve him as mind slaves and all that shit. Oracle tries to hack into the code, but Riddler has has anticipated this and placed a failsafe. Batman gets a message on his computer from Riddler that if the game server is shut down via unauthorized means, it will send out a kill switch frequency that will shut down the brain activity of anyone currently under Edward Nigma's mind control, effectively killing them. Riddler also says that telling the public what's happening will force him to trigger the kill switch, meaning warning people to stop playing the game isn't going to work either. The only way Batman can stop this is by completing the game and discovering the system override password, which is the reward for anyone who defeats the final boss. Batman, of course, proposes other solutions because he's not one to fall for Riddler's rules. But Oracle explains that the system is airtight and all of her workarounds would mean triggering the kill switch. Come up with whatever you have to to explain that the game must be played in its original intent. Riddler's broadcasting from an unknown location. Anything you have to say that basically means Batman is stuck into finding people to play the game. Now we've ruled out Batman being able to utilize his other options and we have a reason for the FaZe Clan needing to show up, something that's not really well addressed in the original comic. Batman now needs the team of pro gamers to help him navigate Riddler's game. Enter the FaZe Clan. They get into the game, and knowing that cheating at the game will result in people dying, the FaZe Clan are now required to risk their lives and use their pro gaming skills to win and help Batman accomplish his mission. That's the point. FaZe Clan uses what they're known for and good at instead of some dumb Saturday morning cartoon power of bullshit that has nothing to do with the FaZe Clan in any way. Now, you can write an exciting plot of close calls and other action-packed moments involving the FaZe Clan that involves them solving challenges and using their game skills. They make progress at the game much faster than Riddler anticipated, again, showing that the FaZe Clan is super good at games and super 
super cool. And they also taunt Riddler during the entire game, which is a great way to showcase their real world personalities. They could say stuff like, I'm gonna no scope you in the dick, Riddler, or your no cap unpoggers clip that, or Riddler more like Diddler. Okay, maybe not that last one. Riddler's watching all this and gets so pissed that he decides to log into the game himself because his ego is damaged, which is the known weakness of the Riddler. He replaces the final boss in the game with his own character to take on the FaZe Clan. Except, he's the Riddler. He's smart about this. He's given himself God Mode, he's given himself all the overpowered weapons, he's admin abusing like a motherfucker. He's using that to toy with the FaZe Clan and show them, hey, look how cool I am! You think you can fuck with me? No one beats me at this game. Ha ha! Look how great I the Riddler am! But Batman, using his lateral thinking, is able to outsmart the Riddler because he knew this would happen. The FaZe Clan the entire time was a distraction. Although the game server is totally locked down, Riddler entering the game means he's connected to the server, and the player data isn't locked down, since Riddler needed Batman and his crew to log in to play. Oracle tracks Riddler's location through his IP address and the other things that he used to log into the game, so Batman can now head to Riddler's real-life location location. Just before Riddler delivers a killing decisive blow on the FaZe Clan in the game, which is a nice tense moment, Batman starts kicking Riddler's ass in real life. We get a really cathartic scene where Riddler's overpowered character just stops mid-attack, and we don't see Batman kicking Riddler's ass in real life, but we hear Riddler begging for mercy and his bones cracking because it's all picked up over his gaming headset microphone, which then broadcasts it to game chat so the FaZe Clan gets to sit back and laugh as Riddler gets his ass kicked. After a thrashing and interrogation, Riddler gives up the override code, goes to jail, and everyone's happy in the day is saved. Now that's a story I just casually came up with while writing this script. I spent maybe 10 minutes thinking of it, but I think it sticks to the characters and showcases what the FaZe Clan actually does far better than this comic. We get Riddler's plan sticking to his brains rather than being a big, dumb, stupid idiot. And he only becomes a big, dumb, stupid idiot through his frustration and his issues involving his ego. Batman outwits Riddler by thinking laterally and then taking the first opportunity he can to kick his ass instead of standing around and doing absolutely nothing the entire comic book. FaZe Clan's actual gaming content comes into play here. You not only have their personalities to showcase, but their gaming skills and pretty much any Anything else you can think of because it's them in the game and not FaZe Clan members show up for generic power fantasies. I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you think my plot is better than one a group of professional comic book writers came up with for an endorsement check. And I mean that because I really hope people agree with me that regardless of the FaZe Clan being in this comic, the story here is terrible. And I guess I don't really have much more of a review of this beyond that. This comic is terrible. It's, it's all just terrible. It's embarrassing, it's lame, and it's totally not making me jealous that no matter what I do with my life, I will never be in an official crossover comic with Batman. Never ever. This comic in no way made me insanely spiteful that these guys get to actually be hanging out with the actual Batman, and I don't. And it's not at all invalidating my 10 years of therapy just because I really want to be in a comic with Batman, and that's my childhood dream. And it would mean more to me than anything in the world to meet the Batman. And I want to meet the Batman, and I want to hang out with Batman, and I want my own fucking Batman comic. I want it! 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 I want it